here, and what I'd like to do is really talk about coming to our senses both literally and metaphorically. And the title originally, uh, before it got shortened for the brochure, was coming to our senses, healing ourselves and the world in ways little and big through mindfulness. And I want to really talk about it both from the literal side and the metaphorical side, and in particular recognize that little and big are not a fundamental distinction. So the tiniest little ways in which we can um, drop in on ourselves might have consequences that are just hugely profound. And that, in fact, is well known in quantum, in uh, chaos theory and in uh, you know, weather patterns and you know, you talk about the butterfly effect where the flap of a butterfly's wings in China can produce uh, hurricanes in the Caribbean a few weeks later. So tiny little perturbations in the entire field can actually have enormous implications and are amplified. Uh, and so the work that we do inwardly in the human heart uh, and the work that we do outwardly in the world are not actually happening in two separate worlds. There's only one world, and really there's only one room, whether you're sitting in this room or not. And that is the inter-embedded, interconnected um, warp and woof of uh, life uh, in this universe. And that would include uh, the, what we sometimes call the inanimate world. So it's just intimately woven into a, a whole. And um, I would like to, before we begin, just uh, take a moment to drop into stillness. And just, um, you know, I don't know how many of you were noticing the soundscape. A lot got, got said about it. But before we actually began, uh, this uh, group of people here were putting out some sounds that tickle our auditory uh, nerves, as uh, Taj Mahal loved to say, in ways that were truly amazing. And uh, what was going on between them, you could hear and you could feel. And if you were busy talking, you might not have kind of let that happen to you, although it was coming in to the auditory nerves all the same. But we might have been so preoccupied in conversation or diverted by finding a seat up front or whatever it is that we can actually have the sound be coming to our eardrums but not hear it. And I was just bathing in the soundscape that uh, included the din of all the conversation and, and just marveling at how amazing this world is and the energy of a collection of people who care so much about other people and who make so many sacrifices to really uh, be at the edge and sometimes immersed in the ocean of grief and pain and suffering that arise in the course of the uh, human condition and be available to the other, singly or together or in groups, to uh, in some way or other recognize the intrinsic wholeness of human beings who themselves can't see their intrinsic wholeness and only see the woundedness and the loss. And I think that, in part, uh, what we're talking about here is um, a holding environment for ourselves. Because we create holding environments for other people all the time. And certainly, mindfulness-based stress reduction in the stress reduction clinic is a form of a holding environment, a room that we do all sorts of elaborate things to get people into to do very unusual things that from the outside look a whole lot like nothing. And so it may be that my entire talk is going to seem like much ado about nothing. And if that's the case, there may be good reasons for it. And if you get bored with it, so much the better. Because then you have an opportunity to look at this very, very interesting mind state that we have so much aversion to. Boredom. I don't know what to do. Mommy, what should I do? And often we are driven from pillar to post in the, an attempt to just fill our moments so that we won't have a moment where we don't know what to do, where we feel bored or empty or like somehow or other not complete. 
And when you hold the space of, uh, of uh, the other and recognize their wholeness, the only way that you can do that is by to do that um, with any kind of um, authenticity or integrity is to rest in the, uh, the intrinsic wholeness of your own being. Otherwise, it's just an act. And people, of course, can feel that. And one of the things we train our medical students in is to um, learn how to be present 